Hello and welcome to the Movie Therapy Channel. We are Jim and Sam and this is the show where we like to give you our rating first and then talk about the things we did and did not like about the movie we just saw. Today's movie is X-Men Dark Phoenix. What did you guys think? Because we're going to let you know here in three, two, one. Wait Pass for it. it. Really? How do you do this storyline twice and neuter it both times? I do not understand. Okay, so... X-Men Dark Phoenix. We'll start with the things that we did like. I will go ahead and start. The acting of this movie is fantastic. All the actors do a really good job. James McAvoy, uh, Michael Fassbender, even Jennifer Lawrence, all, this, all the other actors uh, all do a really good job. Uh, they got nice scenes to chew on, especially uh, the guy that plays Magneto. Magneto's uh, really charismatic and he has some nice moments in this. The other thing is that the last 30 minutes are are actually quite fantastic and really exciting. What about you? Um, I'd have to agree. The last 30 minutes was really what made it an interesting watch for me. I think what's different between me and you is that I'm a little bit more not invested in the X-Men group. I didn't even remember some of the things that you were saying after that about the storyline. So I think that's what made it a little bit more enjoyable, enjoyable for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I thought some of the acting sequences were very captivating and interesting and it caught my attention the entire time. Like I, there was, I was a little bit slow in the beginning, but for the most part, I wasn't really bored. Uh, what was your favorite scene? Uh, my favorite scene is when they were, before they were trying to get Jean from the woman that was like trying to take her powers or whatever. But to say that, I didn't like the way that that scene ended, but like right before the big like train scene and I'll explain why I don't really care for that part because I just felt that her going back to the good side it was just like okay I'll go back to the good side it just didn't feel like it felt too quick but leading up to trying to save her I thought it was I thought was probably the most fun part of the movie I agree with you. The train sequence at the end is... I mean, that whole sequence starting from them going into the house, the train sequence, the mm -hmm. whole ending. Uh, that's my favorite scene. I think that's going to be everyone's favorite scene from this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, so with that, that pretty much covers the things that I liked. So let's get into the things that we didn't like about this movie. I know. So, so for me, I will start... First thing, if you want this film to fall into canon with the other X-Men movies, forget it. It is out yeah. the window. <laughs> It is, it's, ah, oh, it is so not connected to any of the other X-Men movies because of the things they do in this movie. It's just a joke. I mean, it's just, you can't watch this in conjunction with other X-Men movies. It's a one-off with the, with as much as they keep it in canon with the other ones. Mm -hmm. So I'm pervy to that. I know you're not so much in tune with that kind of stuff. But I, th this was a series that's supposed to lead into the very first X-Men movie and it does not at all. Well, I, I will say... I do remember the first X-Men movie, and it is very confusing. Like, it doesn't seem like there was a connection. And, and that was the one that I really remember. It's just... They've just been so far in between, and these aren't movies that we really we watched. These aren't movies that I really was super always on board with. I always liked the X-Men, but I wasn't, you know, quite as invested in them as you. But I did think that it was... There was actually sometimes I have to say that maybe it was a little bit confusing. Maybe it was a little bit, some of the things were a little bit off-putting and I just wasn't really, I just didn't really connect with it in a way that I think I should have. Okay, and I think there's a reason for that and I'll get into it in a minute. But before I get into that, this is, I want to talk about, like, this is the second time that they've attempted the Dark Phoenix storyline. And the first time they attempted it was X-Men 3, X-Men The Last Stand. Mm -hmm. And this is the with their second attempt, they've once again neutered this story, which is supposed to be an intergalactic, multiple universes, worlds, where they're chasing chasing Jean Grey. And I'm not expecting that in this iteration of the X-Men, but the fact that they essentially took this, what is a world-ending storyline, sort of almost like a galaxy-ending storyline, and boiled it down to a girl on the run crying about her powers is incredibly disheartening, for, especially for a film that's supposed to be like the last hurrah of the X-Men movies. You've been making these movies for 20 years. I feel like you could have gone bigger and better, especially with this one, with the Dark Phoenix story. This is the last, last one? Yeah, because Marvel now has it. Marvel's going to reboot this. Oh, so this is supposed to be like the big hurrah. This is it. 
as far as the X-Men movies we've had for the last 20 years, this is it. So like, that means done. that Disney's probably just going to take it and just revamp it, and we might yeah. not even get the same characters. And the Marvel's going to comic book, guys. It's going to comic book this up. So whereas, like, this is very grounded, they wear, like, X-Men suits in the opening rescue scene, and then th- those suits are gone. Like, they, d- they don't come back, and then the rest of the movie, they're all in street gear. Mm. Marvel will not 100% give them X suits. They'll get uniforms. And I don't think Marvel will ever i don't think marvel will do the dark phoenix storyline because we got it twice so far yeah and so far it's been poor uh just not good because the way the film itself is fine but it should have been so much more with the source material you're working with it's it, the same thing could have been said for apocalypse because apocalypse storyline is so epic in the comic books that the film just at least they tried to go a little bit bigger with apocalypse yeah, I guess when you put it in that light, it does seem like quite a bit of a letdown because this doesn't feel like the ending of an error. Like, it's not the big epic moment that I think people want because I didn't feel like there was a big epic moment. I didn't, I mean, I realized, I knew it was going to be the last movie of this franchise with this like cast and whatever, this full story circle, whatever, but I didn't realize that it was like. I, I just didn't, I don't know, I just didn't... The last hurrah. Didn't realize it was quite as... The Dark Phoenix is essentially to Phoenix. the X-Men movies what like Thanos is to That's the what Avengers. I'm understanding. I mean, and they did not, I mean, they completely... There is no connection between, you can't compare Endgame or no. Infinity War to this at all. Like, there's no comparison. Like, that's, a, I mean, Endgame, Infinity War, Endgame is epic. <laughs> yeah. So this storyline, they took that. There's a little hint at the intergalacticness because with the Jessica Chastain, star- Chastain characters that are in it, like they're after the Dark Phoenix power, and it's essentially decimated their planet, and they want to get in control of that power. But you never really like realize, feel like what their motivations are, uh, who they are, where they really came from. You just get a little bit of their backstory. And the other thing with them is that they have these powers, but you have no idea what the powers do. Like there's a scene when. They're interacting with a human character and they're trying to get information from them, but the human character won't give it up. So like, all right, we'll just take it from you. And then they like twist their hand and then the person's chest caves in and you don't know what they're doing to them. Yeah. You have no idea what the power is, what it does. It just happens. And then we're, it just cuts onto the next scene. Don't know what they got from them. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. That's kind of where I was saying like something did kind of feel out of place and confusing because yeah. like I didn't understand why she was able to just do that like i get that they were aliens like they were obviously not from this planet and they just like all magically had this power that they knew how to just but they didn't kill people or you don't even know if they killed them they might have killed them but how do you get information if they're dead the other thing is i will say that their arrival scene was pretty cool it was super creepy their arrival was cool like it was a little disturbing like when they showed up they were creepy they were evil groups and then essentially they didn't, uh, no and then way. they just disappear for the next hour after yeah. they show up. They don't come back. Yeah. And I wish they would have leaned more into the creepiness of Jessica Chain's group. We do see them some more, especially in the second half of the film, but it's not the creepy atmosphere that we had when we were first introduced to them. Mm-hmm. So now to wrap it back to your other point where you said the film felt like it wasn't connecting with you. Because to me, what this boils down to is that this is a film that essentially is, it's one really long first act. So you know me. Sure. I like my three act structures in my film. You have your yes, setup. You, do. you have your setup. You have your, essentially the story after the setup, and then you have the conclusion. So that's your three acts. So setup, story, conclusion. The setup is that Jean has been possessed by the Phoenix. She goes bad, and then they have to stop her. Mm-hmm. By the time they come to the realization that they have to stop her, we're about an hour and a half into the film. That is essentially where your second act starts. Mm. And then their second act start is one group's like, we need to stop Gene. The other group's like, no, we need to save Gene. That lasts all of maybe 10, 12 minutes. And then then we're into the third act. Yeah, but I also like, okay, maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't like how she just was like magically okay with everything. Like, he just, like, she sees everything in his mind, and then she's like, oh, okay, that's fine. Well, that's part of, like, because that's the second act boiled down to 10 minutes. 
all of that emotion that she had there she in just, that like, moment. She just clicked it, but like there wasn't, there was no bridge for her to like realize. I know that should have been t- over the course of an hour and a half of the movie. Okay, don't yell at me. I didn't make the movie. <laughs> no, I'm not yelling at you, but I'm saying like the reason why you felt like it was super quick. Because it was. Yes. So I know you're not yelling at me. This story is sort of parallel to X Men: Days of Future Past, where sure. in X Men: Days of Future Past, Magneto believes they need to kill Mystique before Mystique can kill. Uh, she ass- assassinates like a- Trask or the president, and that enacts them to create the Sentinel program that wipes out the mutants in the future. Mm-hmm. So Magneto says he's like, "Oh, if we kill Mystique here, she never kills anyone. They never do the Sentinel program. Problem solved." Days of Future Past is Magneto. They want to kill Mystique. So you essentially replace Mystique with Jean in Dark Phoenix. And it's a similar plot. They need to stop Jean. But whereas in X-Men Days of Future Past, that whole thing of where they're chasing Mystique to kill her so she doesn't do her assassination that creates the Sentinels, that spans over the course of like an hour and a half of the film. That is your driving force of the film. That hour and a half is boiled down to 10 minutes in Dark Phoenix. That's why there's a lot of stuff that feels kind of like very quick, very just almost convenient. Mm -hmm. And the first hour and a half feel very slow or meandering because it's really just a really long first act. You're watching this a really long setup for a a long battle at the end. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think to me, that's my biggest issue is that the film's one really long setup. Yeah. That takes abrupt turns because our characters do like... We need to stop. And then it's like the very next scene. We need to save this person. And then it's like, and it's roll done. credits. Yeah. So, I mean, those are essentially, those are my issues with this film and no, why I think it uh I get suffers. it. Now that you've like, yeah. Now that you've like kind of explained it to me, it makes a lot of sense. I'm like, oh. Those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. All right. I say I went a little long on this, but. We try. For the, I mean, for the last X-Men film, I'm pretty disappointed. You could essentially, this series, you could watch X-Men, X2. I mean, even X-Men The Last Stand makes sense within the context of the trilogy. Then you could watch X-Men First Class. Then you could watch X-Men Days of Future Past. And you could essentially just end it with X-Men Days of Future Past. Uh, because X-Men Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix are essentially feel like one-offs within this continuity of X-Men films. Logan feels like in Elseworlds, like what happened if, you know, if Professor X accidentally killed all the X-Men. And you could uh, you could also end it with Logan because it does fit within the continuity of the X-Men franchise. Yeah. So, but for me, uh, Dark Phoenix was essentially a, a one-off. Doesn't tie into any other of the films. Uh, Person have any interest in seeing this again? Uh, last 30 minutes is good. Uh, just everything else about it was just... Mm. yeah i agree okay that's it for me that's it for me okay that's it for us thank you for watching this episode of the movie therapy channel if you like this show like and subscribe because we got more coming i believe men in black men in black men in black next week perfectly done perfectly done